All right, when you're thinking about changing cities, you need to be thinking about two things. First of all, the problems that occur in cities and because of cities. And secondly, some of the solutions to those problems. When we're thinking about the problems, we can divide it into three categories. Firstly, waste. Secondly, transport. And thirdly, food. With waste, the problem is that we're producing too much of it, particularly from households. And we don't have anywhere to put it or to dispose of it. That is going to ruin our countryside, either in landfill, or we're going to end up having to incinerate it to burn it. And that obviously has implications in terms of global warming because all of those nasty gases are going up into our atmosphere. How can we solve the problem of waste? Well, there's a few ideas. I'm going to talk about two today. Firstly, recycling. A great example of recycling is probably in your own household. There are recycling schemes all over the country, but recycling schemes can really cut down on the amount of rubbish that we are throwing away and, and having to dispose of. It recycles all of those products, things like glass, plastic, paper, back into our system to be used again. It also, therefore, cuts down on the amount of raw materials that we're using as well, which will benefit our environment and benefit future generations. The second thing we can think about is in trying to encourage shops and businesses to cut down on the amount of packaging that they're using on their products. There are some horrendous examples of products being packaged, surrounded by bubble wrap, by boxes, all sorts of things. That is not necessary. So if shops and businesses can cut down on the packaging they're using in the first place, that means that people are throwing away less. The second problem that we can think about with cities, as I said, is transport. Transport, particularly on more traditional forms such as cars and planes, obviously produces a huge amount of greenhouse gases which are released into our atmosphere, causing global warming. Obviously global warming may well have a number of impacts on ourselves in our lives but also on future generations and that is obviously covered in other units. How can we solve the problem of transport? Well there is a few ideas. First of all we can encourage people to use bikes a lot more. You may have heard of Boris's bikes. Now, the bike schemes were around a lot longer before Boris Johnson. However, he has been promoting them. He's repainted a lot of the bicycle lanes around London. Encouraging people to use more environmentally friendly forms of transport is important. Another thing you can do is set up park and ride schemes. So this is obviously a benefit because people park their cars at the edge of the city, reduces congestion inside the city, but it also reduces the amount of carbon dioxide being released into the atmosphere because you've got everybody within one vehicle releasing much less gas. Thirdly, you could think about encouraging consumers to buy wisely. So buying things like hybrid cars or electric cars to replace those traditional petrol cars, therefore once again reducing the amount of energy that we're using. The last problem is food. Food is quite a problem, mainly because much of our food that ends up in our supermarkets travels an awful long way to get to us. So things like buying pineapples in December. Pineapples can't be grown in Britain any time of the year, but particularly in the winter it seems ridiculous. We're having to fly all these kinds of tropical fruit and veg from miles and miles away. Obviously that has implications on our environment, but it also seems a little bit crazy. How can we improve this situation? Well could encourage people to grow their own. So set up things like window boxes, roof gardens or allotments, allowing people to grow their own food and therefore not buying food that's had to be shipped or flown in from across the world. Secondly, encourage people to be green consumers, therefore thinking about the environment, buying local, buying only what they need and also looking for particular labels which are a bit more sustainable, things like fair trade and supporting causes such as um, making sure that their tuna, for example, is lying caught, therefore not having an impact on other animals. This is, forms part of the Changing Cities unit and also the Living Spaces unit. Good luck everyone.